Congratulations, it has arrived. <laughs> hey, do you have need? Jaco, with the gift? Yeah. Let's unwrap it. Yeah, let's do that. Jaco, what are we looking at besides a big box? <laughs> Look what the cat dragged in. A passive radar reflector. So um, this is a tri -lens, and this is the thing you really need on the ship. So it's not just a radar reflector, it's a tri -lens. They are not uh, being produced anymore. Uh, I actually don't know uh, because uh, what the reason is. There are two stories on the internet. One is that they, because they use only one single bracket for, for mounting yeah, yeah. and um, they say that's not really strong enough for... Uh, yeah, for the thing comes down. So this is one story that, why they stopped because of claims. And the other one is because it's a military... Uh, it's Quality a, almost. Yeah, it is. And the company is producing for the military as well, so they stopped building these. Well, it actually doesn't matter because I got hand, uh, hand on one of these and this is really the thing to have on the ship because it's, it's passive, so no power required. And you know Jaco, he isn't that scared that quickly. So No, 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 no. I made all mistakes uh, uh, once and uh, one of them was I once sailed uh, back with a friend from Lowestoft to uh, Eimuiden. Um, the weather forecast were fog patches and it actually was a patch from Lowestoft until I married it. <laughs> <laughs> so we never saw, uh, uh, well, we never saw any ship uh, and uh, they um, uh, probably didn't see us. <laughs> I thought I had a radar reflector in my mast, and, uh, but uh, 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 one month after we did the passage, um, I read an article about uh, passive uh, uh, reflectors and the one I had, I could have used a, a wet cloth or a yeah, 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 I, I could have uh, yeah. uh, used my shoes because <laughs> it didn't work anyway. Didn't work anyway. So uh, uh, and um, so from then on, um, I started searching uh, to uh, uh, to find a, a real good passive reflector, not power, no power required, and uh, and this is the best there is. Oh, this is one of the brackets. This is the bracket. It's just one bracket, and now you can see, and it's yeah, actually that is... seven kilo or so. Yeah. This, so, and um, you and just screw it on. This is the, this is the way to. Oh. This is the way you mount it, and this goes onto your mast. And that's it. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah, it is. Ooh. <laughs> it's not. Not that simple, is it? So, and so, just have a curiosity. So we're looking at a at a three balls. It looks yeah. like what is what is in what is in that thing? Do you know what's in there? Magic. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't okay. know. It's, it's it's a mirroring system. Uh, um, I I would say it's uh, quite similar to uh, Fresnel lenses in uh, in uh, lighthouses. Fresnel for, lenses in lighthouses. Then, All right. Then the equivalent for radar uh, radar signals. So it uh, uh, reflects uh, a radar signal in in beams. So it uh, it concentrates instead of it, uh, scatters scattering, scattering mm. all over the world. It concentrates in the direction where it came from. So it's a, like a parabolic kind of system that re uh, really uh, uh, returns the signal. Uh, yeah. So I read the article, which actually compares all the passive radar reflectors. Uh, so from the old fashioned cube, yeah. I think it's called, to the uh, sticks that you can put on your backstay. Basically the sticks are like the wet cloth. I think. Yeah, well, this is what I have. So. That's the one you had. <laughs> I think it's criminal. You can buy them as, as, yeah. as reflectors, yeah. you know, uh, it's really criminal. Thank you. You're welcome. So much. Amazing. Welcome oh. back to another episode of Sailing Windrows. This one about foggy weather or bad weather where people can't see you. I have an AIS, yes, but I also would like to have a passive radar reflector that actually works. And Jaco was so friendly to actually search it for me and give it to me, which was pretty amazing. In order to get it up the mast, I first needed to create new brackets and for that I ordered two aluminum plates and then it was off to get it done. So from my neighbor Jaco, I actually got a tri-lens, which is super nice and super rare, by the way, because they were not for sale anymore, but now they're made again, anyway. 
Um, and this bracket came with it, but the diameter of the bracket is not wide enough. This is about nine ish, but the mast is 12. And besides that, it doesn't go back far enough. It should be about 230. And this is like, well, 10 ish. Um, and then this is only one bracket and this thing comes with two attachment points and it's quite bulky so you don't want to you know see it come down so I thought let's make a bracket so we created a drawing this is what we need to do in the flat space with all the dimensions that are there so I started with transferring that to the aluminum plate this is a 30 by 30 centimeters aluminum plate and then I made this. So basically, I kind of made a line there and with my Stanley knife, I just cut it. I wedged it in the bunk tooth, we call it. Move it forward and backward and then it breaks and then you can just pick it off. So you can have this, which was there. Did the same as here. This I did with the angle grinder, and then made an incision there, wedged it, pulled it, and got it out. And then I drilled the center point hole, which will fit on this. So now the only point is to bend it. And that's actually the reason why I'm here, because here they have a little bendy thingy. So that is very convenient. And it's the proof of the pudding. So now we will see if that works or if it fails. And if it fails, I have one version that I could use. And if not, I'm screwed. So uh, let's go. So for the bendy part, first going to try it with this little plate, which is about the same size that I have to bend. And the reason is because if I don't, I might run into problems because this is basically a little bit higher. So let's see what happens. I don't have a clue what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna give it a try. So, it kind of works, but to be honest, I don't really like, I don't really like this angle. I think I need to be a bit more blunt, like not so, sh a bit more round in a way. Let me see if there's another thing I can use here. So, I found the spare parts. I found some additional angles, so this one was on it, as you can see it's a bit curvy, this one is actually too wide, so you get uh, a curvature like this, which is way too wide, uh, but this one, which is on it, it's actually quite good, because you get a curvature like this. And it's still a bit wobbly, but I'm gonna do a final test of it now. See if it works. And I kind of figured out that you should not make it too tight. So yes, this needs to be tight, but then I need to really slowly, not too, I'm going to bend it around angle. That's a fair enough. 
it doesn't feel like correct or broken. So enough talking, it was time to put my money where my mouth is and start bending the plate with these annoying sounds. Here goes all or nothing. have it super happy with the result and the only thing it needs now is a mast to go in between and just to show you that the essence did not change so this length is the same the depth that is Obviously this one is a lot taller, but I want to have this in the middle of the mast and not at the beginning. And uh, the height is also a little bit different, but yeah, that doesn't really matter. Just gives more grip. So two connecting points, same as here. It's a bit more sturdy, but not a big difference. Super happy with the result. Time to bike home. So, and after all this biking, I can't wait to see if it fits. Let's see. That is going to be absolutely perfect. Right in the middle. Haha! <laughs> That's nice. So obviously we're not going to install it there because it will be at the boom level, but we're gonna install it midway the mast. I don't wanna have it all the way up in the mast because if I get a line entangled, I will never be able to reach it. So midway, that's perfect. And that means that I needed to go up in the mast. And that means that I had the opportunity to try something new, which is Prusik all the way up there. Boat jobs are always in weird places and in curious positions. And this is no different. I prusiked all the way up here. We're halfway and we're installing the trident with my friendly neighbor, Yako, below the bucket. 
so obviously I forgot to take the material to show you how to prusik and that is also because it is rather labor intensive so allow me to show you. You have a baseline, in my case this was the spinnaker halyard and you have a prusik line which is basically a circle line that you create with two knots. You have two of those and they basically slide on the baseline. So the one you connect to your harness, one you connect to your foot. And let's say you want to put tension on one of these lines, you slide it up until it's far enough. Then you actually sit in it or stand in it and it automatically locks because it kind of constricts on the baseline. And from there, you can put up, so let's say this is the harness one, you can put up the foot prusik, you stand on it, you go up, you release this one, it gets loose, you slide it on, you sit in it again, and you can put your foot one up. So this is a way you can actually go up the mast solo. It's rather labor intensive. I would also not recommend it on stormy seas, but at least it works in case of emergency. So Jaco was actually below with a second line, which was the mainsail halyard to keep me secure, and he was having fun. Yeah, talk to the ass, because the head ain't listening. Fixing the trident in place was basically a matter of drilling holes and putting the brackets in place uh, with some rivets to prevent corrosion. <laughs> Everything for the movie, man. Having the trident in place, there was only one thing I also wanted to do, as then that was to replace the wind indicator at the top of the mast. There was a rather big bird that actually sat on it, which not really helped the function of the thing. So I thought, let's just prove it onwards. And not all jobs go as anticipated and this was a good example because after prusiking all up there I noticed that my prusik got stuck in the block for the spinnaker line and I was unable to actually reach the mast. So it was about time to go down. I was actually getting quite tired and uh, uh, after getting down I had the pleasure of enjoying the trident and looking and marveling at its beauty. We're closing in on being finished with all the security gadgets and the trident is safely in place. It did leave me with a problem though and the problem was that I had to go up another time in the mast and obviously this time there was a lot more wind. I did it the old fashioned way so Jaco cranked me up on the winch all the way to the top and there I had the opportunity to replace the wind indicator. So in all honesty I'm not saying I'm afraid but it is high and it's quite windy up here. So it's not the most comfortable position to be in, but uh, we're good and we're shooting material. Job done, time to go down. And that was the more scary part I noticed because if you're Prusa King, you're in control, but now Jaco was in control. And although he does it in a very smooth way, it still feels a little bit uneasy. Super! Ik ben echt heel blij. Lekker bezig. Dit is wel spooky, spooky. Even wachten. Ja. And that's it. A trident in the mast. A new wind indicator, the boat is all ready to go. So that's also what we do. We are going sailing next episode. If you'd like this one, leave a like. If you want to leave a comment, I would like that a lot. And if you want to know how next time is going to be happening, hit subscribe. Hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching boys and girls. See you later. Cheers. Yeah, what can you say? Quite amazing indeed. Thanks, Jaco.